of your safety Whosoever will come to the door There was a preacher in the Bible Preparing for a storm that would descend Okay, good morning everyone. This is Ricky. And um, I'm here this morning. I hope you're having a great, hmm, I hope you're having a great week. That's it. And so um, we have been having a great week. It's Sunday morning, and I want to bring a message. It's a, it's a message that we are familiar with in, in some ways, but we'll bring out some facts about the Noah's Ark, okay? I want to teach Noah's Ark this morning. And uh, you may have seen it in Sunday school class or vacation Bible school or just heard it in, in random. And uh, Noah's flood, someone may say, uh, boy, it's, flo it's flooding out there like, like Noah's flood that time. Well, not quite, but um, it did have, a, there was a, a worldwide flood. We will give some facts about it, but here's what I want to focus on today is um, the picture, the ark is a picture of Christ Jesus, Okay. And it's a picture of salvation, a person being in Christ, okay? If, there, if a person's in the ark, they're in Christ, that is, they're saved. If they're not in the ark, they're not saved because they're outside the ark where the judgment could reach them, okay? And so we know that there is a judgment coming, and we know that uh, in Christ, the scripture says that a person is saved. So let's get into details, some details about that. And uh, let's look at Noah's Ark. Now, the story is chapter 6 of Genesis, okay? It starts there. And it goes through chapter 9 or so and just just beyond. And then you have Noah and the, um, the eight coming off the ark and, of course, all the animals and all of that. So let's get started. First of all, we're going to read and, and see why there had to be a flood. Why did, why did God flood the earth? He never wanted that, but he's not going to allow sin to reign, and there's limitations. And one day, of course, he will limit all sin, and that's, that's going to take place in the future. So let's look at it. Genesis chapter number 6. And we're going to know, uh, uh, go down to verse 5 for the sake of time. This is the scriptures right as Noah was, God was telling Noah and pick Noah to be the one to save, actually to save the entire world. This is God's plan. But we'll, we'll look at verse 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man, that's mankind of course, was great in the earth. Now notice how great it was and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Okay, that's about where we are in America, and I'm, I'm not sure about, I would say the probably the whole world, okay, has, has, has got to the place and point to where we are seeing this at now. But God's long-suffering and it's his timing when he does something about it. But in this case, it says, It repented the Lord that he made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. Sin grieves God. And God is very long-suffering, but there comes a time when God's going to punish. He's going to give out judgment, and he gives many, many chances to, to uh, for a person to repent, to look back, or a nation, or a church, you can see this. This ark was in building some 120 so or years. That's how long that God gave them while the ark was being built by Noah and probably his family and maybe some few other ones that he had hired to help build. I'm not sure about that. But let's go on to say this right here. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and every creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. God says sin is so ugly. God said, I, I wish I hadn't have made them. But verse 8, here's grace. Here's the unmerited favor of grace that God was looking for. But Noah... 
here's grace, found grace, unmerited favor in the eyes of the Lord. Wow. Thank God there was someone that God could look upon and show his grace, his unmerited favor, his favor in saving mankind. Okay? And for the sake of time, we won't go through all the details but you remember God said, oh, Noah, I want you to build an ark. And he told him the dimensions of it and the height and the width. He told him everything. Now, I'm not a mathematician. I think that's the proper way to say that. I, I, I understand that there was over 1.5 million feet of, of linear feet, foot by foot, in the ark, that's a lot of room. Someone says, well, how did they get all them animals in there? Well, first of all, obviously, he didn't take all the big animals. He probably took, took the smaller animals, male and female, of course, the smaller animals, okay? That would be less room and uh, less, um, less everything, I guess you could say. So that's one fact that uh, all the animals wouldn't wouldn't probably, wouldn't full grown. Probably took them in as, as babes, okay? And so we see that. And also, God said, I want you to make it out of gopher wood. Let me give you a fact about gopher wood. It is a wood that does not rot. Now, I'm not saying it will last for eternity, but in our mind, in our lifetime or beyond, it wouldn't rot. And, and, and Christ... He is God, came down to earth, robed himself in a human body. God has no decay in him. Christ had no decay in him when he was born. He was born of the Virgin Mary. He's God himself. That ark and that wood, that uh, gopher wood, represents that it's not corruptible. God's not corruptible. Jesus never sinned. He never sinned at all. Now, uh, Noah was to take the pitch and, and pitch it in the ark, and then he was to go outside and pitch it out the ark. Now, that pitch, if I understand this correctly, it's like a, a, a oil substance. Of course, it's a lot thicker. It's, it's something that's like a paste, and so that is, uh, that is the security of the ark, okay? In other words, you pitch it within and without. You can't get in. The water couldn't get in and the water couldn't get out. It was totally, it was totally waterproof, if you will, okay? So therefore, we are in Christ. If a person's in Christ, they are waterproof. That is from the judgment that's coming of course, in the future, okay, uh, the destruction of this world in hell itself. If a person's outside, they must come through and in Christ to have the salvation. So the pitch is a is a security of judgment not coming in or out. Now, there's one more thing that I want to mention about the the um, ark. You remember God told him to build a window, okay, up up at the top, and that window was for them, uh, apparently for ventilation, I'm sure, uh, that could have been some of it, but probably to look up to heaven, because looking down, they would only see judgment. Looking up was their hope. But then there's one more fact that we want to bring out, and we're going to bring more about this door. That door in that side, that door is the key to getting in the ark, okay? And we will say more about that door as we go along. So number one, why? Number one, judgment is coming. Why? Because of sin. Why is this judgment coming to the future of this world when it's going to be burnt up with a fervent heat? 2 Peter chapter 3 tells us that very plainly. There's going to be a reno renovation, if you will. They're going to, he's going to burn, well, not a renovation. He's just going to burn up everything that is in the existence of sin. 
Then he's going to make a new heaven, new earth, and a new Jerusalem. We've talked about that in the past. New, new heaven, new earth, and a new Jerusalem. Now, let's go to the next point. The plan, God's plan. This is God's plan for the ark, okay? For, for Noah to build an ark. This was not Noah's plan. God didn't come to Noah and said, Noah, would you help me with this plan? Would you help me try to save mankind? God's, it's God's plan altogether 100%. Now, let me share something with you. Listen very carefully. The salvation of God, of being saved, okay, from the judgment to come, being born again, it is 100% God's salvation, his plan, and safety. It is God's. He thought it. He wrought it. And if you don't believe it, you do not have the salvation that God has provided. That is so simple from the Bible. Please listen to it. And if you are saved, it gives us security. But if you're not saved, the only plan of salvation is God's salvation. Not what man says, not even what the church in general, the churches in general say. It's God's plan, and we will bring that out as we go down through here. So it's God's plan. The ark is God's plan. It is God's plan. Let's say that Noah said, well, God, if you would build a big old boat and put us all on there, and put all the animals on there. <laughs> Noah didn't have enough brains in his head to probably come up with all of that. And he's probably thinking, well, that wouldn't work anyway. How, come I, how am I going to get them animals on that bark? How am I going to build an ark this size? It wouldn't, God, it wouldn't know it was God's plan. Whatever plan you come up with, you, you're, that's not God's plan. It is God's plan. Only the Holy Spirit, only God's Word, the Holy Word of God, the Holy Spirit of God can show you God's salvation in His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. His death, His burial, His resurrection. Death because of sin. The Ten Commandments shows us that we are sinners, lost and headed to a place called hell. It is God's salvation and it is God's plan. Now, with that in mind, we've already looked at the gopher wood. We've looked at the door. We mentioned the window around the top. We mentioned the, the window, the uh, again, the window and the pitch. Now, this pictures Christ Jesus. Number three, number three. No, let's review. Number one, why was judgment coming? Why did judgment coming? Because of sin. Why is judgment coming in the future? In the future, because of sin. The wages of sin is death. Judgment's coming. Okay? Number two, it was the ark was God's plan and salvation and safety. Just as Christ come to the cross of Calvary, paid the debt, it is God's plan, God's safety, and it's his salvation. You receive it as a gift from God. He did the work. We do the believing. That's it. Number three. Again, the ark pictures Christ, okay? It pictures Christ, death, burial, and resurrection. Why did everything die? Because of sin. Why did Jesus Christ die on the cross of Calvary? Luke 19, verse 10 says, For the Son of Man is come, that is to the earth, was born among us, he has come to seek and to save that which was lost. He died for our sins. The, the ark was built. The ark was secure because there was a judgment of sin coming. The death of Christ. Okay? The burial, the water was surrounded around the ark. Christ was laid in a tomb dead. He, he died. He, his death. Three days he, 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 was, he was dead. He wasn't in a coma. He wasn't just, just an illusion. He died because the wages of sin is death. He had to pay. So he died on the cross. He was buried. Three days later, he arose. When that ark, by the way, it was over a year 
before it landed. And, and, and after then, the waters receded. And even after then, there was a time when Noah would send out the animal, the, the what was it, the, uh, the dove and the, and the crow, I believe it was. And then the water was receded. And they come out. They come out of the ark. That is a picture of salvation, Christ coming out of the grave. He come out of the grave. He arose from the grave over the death of judgment and the burial of judgment. Okay? When Noah come out, his family, they were all alive. We are alive in Christ Jesus by the resurrection of the dead. Christ literally come out of the grave. So he is a picture. I want to bring out, I've done a, 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 a lesson, a Bible lesson on numbers, okay? Didn't get into depth of it, but I think we went through 1 through 12. But let's look at verse 9, chapter 9, and verse 1 of Genesis. Look, I don't think this is an accident. The Bible is clear. Look at verse 9, And God blessed Noah and his sons, and said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth. Though number 9 is the new beginning. Okay, they come off the ark. Everything that they saw and understood from the past was changed. It was changed physically, the earth. It was changed as far as the sunlight and all the things that we have now. There was a lot of changes. Listen to the scriptures. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If any man be in Christ, not outside the ark, but inside the ark. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. That is our old life when you get saved. All things become new. You see, the, you see life in a different perspective. You have a new master. You want to serve the Lord. You want to live for God because there's something new in you. And it is Christ, the Holy Spirit of God, living within us that gives us the strength and the power and the know-how and the willpower. He does it all. We just submit we just, we just yield ourselves to him. We yield ourselves in salvation first. That is first. You've got to be in Christ Jesus to come out of the ark, if you will, to come to new life. When you're in Christ, you have new life. So this ark is a picture. It is a, a picture of the new beginning. It is a picture of his death, his burial, his resurrection. And we're going to look at some verses um, down here, number four. Number four, here's what, here's what I want to ask you and ask your loved ones and ask anyone in this world that might be listening or anyone that you can reach to ask the question. You know, it would have been funny, a little humor here. It would have been funny if God would have told Noah, says, now Noah, says, now I'm going to build an ark or I want you to build it either way. But I want you to put these big old poles and beams on the outside of this ark. And I want you to wedge them into the side of the ark real good. And I want you to put little knobs there so that, that, that you and your wife and your children can hang on outside this boat. And if you hang on during this, this storm that, that's going to come, then you'll be saved. And I'll let you into my new world, and I'll let you into heaven. Now, <laughs> a lot of people, can you just, I'm going to try to find a picture with a Noah's Ark, and I'm going to try to draw something or show something, people trying to hang on to the Ark on the outside. That would be humorous. I don't know if I can do that or not, but I hope I can. But can you imagine people trying to hold on? It, it's, it's not a funny, it's not really funny if you think about it. Judgment is, is a serious thing. But can you imagine the thought, the, the little finite mind of man trying to hang on outside that ark? No, I'm inside the ark. Are you inside? Jesus said in John chapter 6 and verse 37, he says this, he said, all that the Father giveth to me 
shall come to me, and he that cometh to me, I let no wise cast out. Let me share something with you about that ark. We're going back to the door. You remember that huge door that was in this side there? Well, I want to read a scripture to you that tells us that God, um, wow, look, look, at, look at the scriptures here. Um, let me find the verse. Okay, it, I can't find a verse, but I know the scripture. It says that God called Noah to come into the ark. Now, if if God called them inside the ark, where was God at? He was in the ark. He was in the ark, okay? Now, now picture this right here. God in Christ is calling us to himself through his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, all that cometh to me, I'll in no wise cast out. Okay? Come unto me, all ye that labor and in heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It did not say to, God did not say, Noah and his family, go into the ark. I'll be in there later. I'll, I'll think about coming there with you. No, no, no. He called them into the ark. God is in this world through his son, calling a people to come to himself through his son. Now, I'm going to read a verse to you that tells us that God, that God has reconciled, already made peace with sinners. That's you and I from Adam. We are sinners, born sinners, sinners by nature, sinners by choice, sinners by practice, but God's called us into the ark, into Christ, by his son. Listen to the scriptures. And all things, this is 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18, and we're going to look at verse 19 also, that says a, practically the same thing. And all things are of God, who, that's God, who have reconciled. That means made peace with. He has, he has brought us back. Reconciled us, that's sinners, to himself by Christ Jesus. How? By Christ Jesus, through Christ Jesus. The next verse, to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling, that means drawing us to him, making peace, making favor with us by a gift called salvation. To wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world, that's you and I. For God so loved the world that he gave. He made peace with us through his son. Read it again. To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Unto himself. Now verse 21, we're going to read this, but let's read this. This is a great verse. This is a verse that we need to look at and memorize, by the way. That would be great. For he, that's God, have made him, that's the sinner, the ones that come to him, to be sin. I'm sorry. For he have made him Christ to be sin for us. Okay? God sent his son. His son was our sacrifice, our go-between, our redemption, our, our, our shed blood, if you will, for our sins. For he, God, have made him, that's Christ, sin for us, who knew no sin. Christ said to have no sin, that we, that's sinners, might be made the righteousness that is in Christ, of Christ, of God in him, reconciling us to him. God's already made peace with sinners through the cross. It, outside the ark, outside of Christ, you have no redemption, no salvation. Are you outside the ark with your church member trying to hang on? Are you there with your 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 petty works, if you will? Or I'm not a hypocrite. I'm not like them others. Or you just said, well, I believe you got to be in the ark. Are you in the ark or out of the ark? When those animals came in and God called his family in, here's what I want you to see. God closed them in. It says it shut them in. He sealed them in. 
The scripture says we're sealed by the Holy Spirit of God, that is those that come to Christ within their heart, accept him in here for his death, burial, and resurrection from the second death, which is hell. It says he shut them in. We're sealed to the day of redemption. Are you inside the ark or outside the ark? Now, I want to share something else with you. And um, let's see here. If you're trying to get there by your flesh, that is what you can do. The scripture says in Romans 8, 8, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. You say, well, I, I've got rituals. I've been baptized. I've been sanctified. Man, I, I don't go to the places. I don't do the, I don't even hang around people that do them. And, and that. Rituals. Boy, I've been confirmed. Boy, I, I believe up here. Boy, I got, I got a lot of faith. If you don't have Christ, rituals, you're outside the ark. Listen to the scriptures. Going to go to, um, to do, 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 um, to Romans, Romans chapter number eight, please. Romans chapter number eight. We're going to look at the verse, verse nine, and I believe it's verse eleven. But ye are not in the flesh. He's talking to Christians here that are in Christ, but in the Spirit. That is in Christ Jesus, the Holy Spirit of God, which liveth in every believer that is saved. If so, that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. It's a question mark. It's a question. If Christ dwelleth in you, which you're saved, if you're saved, you are. If he's not in there, if he's not God in your life, has there never been a new birth, a new salvation, and he did the work, you are outside the ark hanging on, and you're not in the ark. The scripture says, Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. That is so plain. Now, we're not talking about you get it by doing something. You get the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, as they call it, by, call it, by doing something. When you believe on Christ, Christ comes within you. Listen to this. And if Christ be in you, that is in the ark, you're saved. The body is dead. That old nature is dead because of sin. But the spirit of life, that's eternal life. That's everlasting life. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life, eternal life, because of righteousness. But listen to verse 11. But if the spirit of him, that's Christ Jesus, that raised up Jesus from the dead, there's the resurrection, that's coming out of the ark to a new world, to a new life, to a, a replenishing the earth, um, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken, that means make alive this whole body one day in the future when he comes back, your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth within you. That's not works. That's God's works. Are you in Christ? Are you saved? Are you born again? Um, if you're not saved, you say, well, Ricky, what do I do if I realize I'm outside the ark? Listen carefully. You are a sinner. You believe that or not. And you say, God, I can't undo what I've already done. Lift up your heart. That is that, 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 that part of you that says yes to God. I believe. I believe you sent your son, Jesus. And God, I ask you right now, once and for all, no trying it out, no doing it over and over, once for all. God, once for all, I come to you as a sinner. Once for all, God, I'm sorry. I have sinned. I can't undo what I've already done, but I turn to you. I turn from my sin, that is my will to, to not sin, my will to trust your son. And Jesus, I ask you to come in my life. And save my place, save me from a place called hell. Lord, come in and save me. Be my savior. Give me eternal life. I thank you for the day. I thank you for this time. Father, save me in Jesus' name. Hope you've enjoyed the message. Don't let it pass you by. Go ahead and take care of that. Uh, give you a little bit of music. 
And uh, until next lesson, Bible lesson, be good to yourself. Do thyself no harm. Do what God wants you to do. Amen. Come to the door. Come to the door.